Hello YouTube, welcome back to Brunger Builds. Today we are going to be painting and weathering this range trooper helmet I 3D printed off of Thingiverse. Links for everything in the description. Along with the helmet came a couple of vent pieces that I resin printed since I knew I wouldn't be able to get the fine detail uh, from a filament printer. So, started with sanding all the little support nubs that were still left on the resin prints. And honestly, sanding is going to be the story of today's build. Sanding and more sanding. I used 400 grit, um, and I think I may have used some 800 grit. I used 220 grit to get the backs of all the prints, aside from this big piece, which I used 80 grit because I had a lot more to remove. Um, I went back around on the sides for any little nubs with 400 grit so that the surface could be nice and smooth when I went to go paint it. So here you can see I really roughed up the back of this piece because I knew I wanted a lot of good glue adhesion. The print was a little not square at the top and bottom, and so I took it over to my belt sander and used some 800 grit to really square off those edges. After that, I used a microfiber towel with a little bit of dampness to just clean all the dust and shot it with some Rust-Oleum semi-flat black enamel. I had masked up the back of all the pieces so that when I went to glue them, I knew I was gluing to the piece and not to the paint job. Once that was done, I hopped into detailing the helmet. This is a long, drawn out process. Um, I think in total I probably spent 16 hours-ish from start to finish just sanding. Obviously it took a lot longer for the other stuff, paint and whatnot, but plan on sanding for quite a while. Uh, I did this over the course of a few days. Here you can see um, I'm using a razor blade because I had a couple spots where my supports were not that great on my print. And so I went around and kind of picked out those spots of filament that kind of noodled up and boogered up. And just kind of scraped them away, sanded some more, and just kept on going. Going into these projects, you always know there's going to be a lot of detail work, but it never quite hits you just how much detail work there is until you're knee deep in it. There's so many little curves and square angles that you gotta be careful about. There's little filament boogers here and there, everywhere. You really just gotta be very thorough and methodical. Um, I used, I think 180, maybe 220 grit sandpaper to just knock off um, some of the high points. I was fortunate that I didn't have a bunch of obvious layer lines like some filament prints get and so I just kind of knocked off what I could with that sandpaper. Here you can see on the brow of the helmet I had some really bad noodling from the filament. Uh, my supports were not great here but uh, I just took a nice sharp wide chisel and slowly and carefully kind of picked all those loose noodles of filament out of there. Just making sure to stay flat and level with that chisel and sanding here and there, chiseling here and there, getting it as flat as I could, knowing that I was gonna come back over it with wood putty and fill in all those divots and holes and gaps and good stuff. I think I hit it with 80 grit on the brim. The main spot where layer lines were really obvious were like the last, you know, 20 layers of the top of the helmet. And so I used some really rough, probably 80 grit to get those semi-smooth and then went back over with like 180, 220 uh, over and over. That little sander you see is actually for foot calluses. It was recommended by a YouTuber named MM's Prop Shop. She says she uses it a ton and I figured I'd give it a go. It was okay, uh, good for getting like really rough stuff, but I ended up just kind of sanding with my hands most of the time. 
Here you see I'm using all kinds of different pieces of wood or files or anything really that has a nice square edge that I can kind of wrap the sandpaper around and get into all those different little angles in the helmet. As I was sanding, I wanted to make sure I maintained as many sharp, clean angles as I could on the helmet, um, just so I wasn't going back and like having to fill in and try and recreate angles because I removed too much material or anything like that. When all the sanding was done, I went back with a damp microfiber cloth and removed as much dirt as I could. I ended up turning on my air compressor and also blowing a bunch to dry the water that was from the microfiber towel, but also to get the dust in any nooks and crannies there might be. Pro tip, before spraying out of a spray can, put your can in a bucket of hot water. This will help the paint flow a little smoother and hopefully lend itself to even coats. Here I'm using a Rust-Oleum sandable primer, spraying in the paint booth that I made myself. I've actually got a video on my channel if you want to check that out. I hadn't quite dialed in the little slot for the air filter, so I was getting a lot of back spray, and so I ended up taking it outside just to do this first coat of primer. I ended up getting that sorted out, and for the most part, the rest was painted in my little paint booth. So here it is, first coat of primer. You can kind of see there's still some lines, there's still some stuff, but overall that first real thorough go of sanding is gonna really benefit you in the long run. It's kind of a pain, kind of takes a while, but it's better to have sanded a little too much than not enough on that first layer. So here I went back over the primer with 220 grit, um, sanding with a real delicate hand, just kind of going over the entire thing, knocking all those high points off. I went through on all the fine details and sanded almost all of the primer out of all those creases and crevices in the helmet. I wanted to make sure that as I primed over and over that the detail in these lines were not lost. Here I'm doing my layer of wood filler. A lot of people use Bondo. Um, I kind of decided I didn't want to have to deal with the hassle of wearing a respirator, worrying about that Bondo dust floating all around my garage. So I went with this wood filler and I really liked it. It was easy to remove for the most part and sanded really well. And so I have no complaints. I do think I kind of shot myself in the foot a bit and went a little too heavy overall with the filler. If I were to do this again, I would kind of scrape a bit more off while it was wet. I wanted to make sure that all the layer lines were filled in, but I still think I went a little overboard. Over here next to the visor had some tear out. I think when I pulled the supports out, I wasn't very careful and I probably ripped those spots. So I went back through with some HVAC tape. I have a ton of this stuff laying around from buying a few rolls years ago and I always find myself using it for funky stuff like this. It's nice and rigid and really sticky, and so I just kind of taped it back behind that hole as kind of a backing for the filler to fill against, so it wasn't just falling through the hole into the helmet. All right, so begins the long, arduous journey of sanding, 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 and more sanding. Um, I was using 180 grit and this took me hours. And I did it over the course of two days, I believe. You can see that I removed a ton of that wood filler. And so I really did not need to coat that thing as much as I did, but you live and you learn. Here is what I had accomplished the first night. After I had finished the majority of the helmet sand, I went back through on all the little details where I knew I was gonna square off some edges or make the little rounds on the back of this helmet a bit cleaner. The helmet printed pretty good, but there were some little spots here and there that I knew that if I just filled it in with a bit more wood filler, that I could kind of go back through sanding really carefully and kind of square things off, round things off, and make things look a bit less like plastic and a bit more like a real Stormtrooper helmet. Here I'm regretting my decision to just kind of throw filler into that little nook and cranny bit of the visor. 
I went in and I used a tiny little file, a tiny little piece of sandpaper, and kind of wished my past self had thought about how much trouble future self would be in uh, with that much filler stuck into those crannies. So here you can see these little round bits. The bottom side of them are square or meant to be square and the top is kind of an oval. But each little divot is not quite square um, on the bottom and it's not quite square to the surface of the helmet either. So I went through with a tiny little file, a tiny chisel and also a tiny little flathead screwdriver and kind of like chiseled and cut away at the filler, kind of filed here and there, sanded and got it as square and got it as clean as I could get it. Here you can see I'm throwing on a little bit more putty in spots that I could tell were low or where you could kind of see layer lines. And here it is after the first major sand. Like I said, I removed a ton of that wood filler and so I really wish that I had been a bit more conservative putting it on but next time I'll know better. So this process created a ton of dust. I was wearing a mask the entire time and had two little DIY air filters that I built running the entire time. There was dust everywhere though in the helmet. Off camera, I took it outside a bunch of times and blew it down using my air compressor. And once I was sure that I had gotten as much dust as possible, I went over it with a dry microfiber towel. I didn't use any water in the towel because I was worried that it would wet the wood filler and that it would destroy everything that I had worked so carefully to sand. So I went through it a few times. Microfiber, took it outside, blew it down. Microfiber, blow it down, back and forth. Just until I was sure that I had gotten as much dust as humanly possible out of every nook and cranny in that thing. And took it outside to give it a nice fresh coat of primer. While that was drying, I started working on the visor. I bought these one millimeter thick clear acrylic sheets off of Amazon and also bought this gold mirror film that's meant for windows. As you saw, I was sanding that acrylic sheet with, because the surface of the sheet was not perfectly flat. And so the film had a bunch of little bumps and things in it. And then from there, I had dust getting stuck under there, um, air bubbles staying trapped. No matter how much I squeegeed, things just weren't working. Eventually though, I did get the hang of it. Instead of spraying water down, I sprayed window cleaner, and that seemed to help a bit more with removing all the air bubbles and dust. Here you can see my trash can full of failed attempts at this window film. When I found this gold window film on Amazon, I figured it was probably gonna be a bit too shiny and gold for my taste. And so I also bought what is essentially sunglasses for your car window. I don't know what the correct terminology is, but it's this window film that goes in the top of your front window and has kind of a gradient. So you can see that it really knocks back a bunch of that shine and like obvious gold color and adds that kind of gradient that I knew would look really nice and a bit more, I guess, professional for a Star Wars prop. So here I am just tracing out uh, a piece of tape. So I knew kind of the basic shape of the visor. I cut a strip of it using my table saw and cutting real slow. I suggest you go even slower than I did because I actually ended up kind of sending a little hairline crack up the thing that is not quite visible. And so I decided not to bother redoing the whole process. So here we are, more sanding. The wet sand is actually pretty fun. Um, it was a nice warm day out and I just sat in the sun um, soaking wet and sanding with 800 grit over the entire thing, nooks and crannies, everything. This isn't really to remove a ton of material. It's more so to just get the helmet nice and uniform and smooth before your first coat of paint. So here I am in my DIY paint booth, just using some semi-flat Rust-Oleum white enamel. I did a tack coat, waited a couple minutes, let that dry a bit, 
and then came back and was real careful coating the entire thing, making sure the paint didn't run in any of those details. It was kind of tricky. It's not the biggest deal if you do get some runs in the paint because you can always kind of knock it down with another round of sanding. But as with many things, it's always nice to treat your future self to a bit less work. After the helmet had sat in my paint booth for the entire night, I went back over the entire thing off camera with thousand grit sandpaper. While the helmet was drying, I took to weathering the little vent pieces. So I put a tiny little dab of super glue on each piece and then stuck it down to these little wood scraps that I have. Just makes handling the pieces a lot easier. You don't have to touch anything while you're painting and you can kind of just let everything dry without being disturbed. So I'm just doing some really light brushing with some metallic rattle can paint that I sprayed into that little cup there. And you know, the idea is that you'd go over this a bunch of times, just adding tiny, tiny bits of metallic paint to all the edges to give that kind of worn metal look um, as if the helmet, you know, has just been out forever getting chipped and scuffed and worn. Here you can see the finished product. So once the helmet was dry, I knew I was gonna have to paint that little center nose piece black. And so I really carefully applied some masking tape, making sure to get really straight lines all over. And then I taped paper to the tape I had already applied and kind of bent that back, slowly working gently to make a nice protective layer all around the helmet. And then tucked it all away nicely in a trash bag so that the only possible thing that's getting paint on it is the one spot that I want paint on. Here I'm just going back over the tape with a nice little square piece of wood so that I can gently massage all the tape and just make sure that the tape grabs nice and sticky to every little edge. So here's another pro tip. A lot of people remove masking tape once the paint has dried, but if you do a nice clean coat that's not runny or anything, it's actually a really good idea to pull the masking tape off while the paint is still wet. This ensures that you'll have no tear out of any paint as you remove the tape, and then the paint can just continue to dry and you'll end up with really nice straight lines. So after about an hour of the helmet sitting in my paint booth, with the space heater on it. I busted out the super glue and very carefully, very painstakingly glued all the vent pieces in. I was really worried about these little vent pieces on the sides here because they didn't really have anywhere to locate against. So I just had to very carefully eyeball the spacing and make sure that I got both of them spaced the same distance from each corner. Then I went back through and kind of dry brushed that little spot that was freshly painted so that the entire nose piece was cohesive. All right, now the fun part. I did a quick Google search for some reference photos just to kind of see what other people had done, um, how they looked in the movies, and just to kind of get a sense of how much I wanted to weather this thing. It's always kind of a strange feeling. You spend hours and days of your life making sure that every step along the way is as clean and as perfect as possible just to get to this point where you go and you beat it all up. It's strangely cathartic. For me, there's an initial panic as I come to grips with the fact that I'm gonna be thrashing this thing. But then I kind of just let myself get deeper and deeper into this kind of slow organic process of chipping here, chipping there, scraping this, scraping that, making sure that nothing is ever symmetrical, making sure that any high point that could be knocked is knocked or dinged in some shape or form. Um, I used a file, I used a wire brush, and just kind of slowly over the course of an hour or two, knocked back every sharp angle, any high point that I felt needed to be not so clean. Once you've done all your chipping and scraping and scratching, it's time to bust out the paints. I just use these super cheap 
acrylic craft paints. You can get them at Michael's or Joann's, but they're like 50 cents a bottle on Amazon. And so I bought a bunch of colors. To start, I'm taking brown with just a pinch of black in it uh, and a bunch of water to really water it down and going over the whole thing with a paintbrush. And as you go, rub, wipe, dab, just kind of do whatever you feel like looks good and realistic. You know, in the real world, any low point is going to be gummed up from years of neglect. Um, any hard to reach nook or cranny is going to be a lot darker than say a more shallow low point you know so you just go over and over and over doing a little bit at a time kind of just feeling it out seeing what you think looks best there's unlimited possibilities you can make this as dirty or as clean as you want inconsistent and asymmetrical are the two key words you should be thinking about through this whole thing because nothing in the real world gets weathered symmetrically or or the same in any place on its surface so once i was done with the black and brown wash i mixed up some orange and brown into a really kind of nasty rust color and went into all the low points and even some high points really, just dabbing here and there gently with a little sponge that I had at the end of my tweezers. The goal of this is to look like, you know, the, the paint has worn away, it's begun to corrode, begun to rust. And so for my preference, if the acrylic paint, you know, doesn't come away completely and kind of just stays in these nooks and crannies and gets really gummy and thick, that's totally fine. Uh, that's gonna really kind of sell that look of corrosion and rust. Almost like this filth has just been building up over the years in all these crevices. So yeah, just kind of going back and forth between applying this sort of thick rust color and then this wash. Dabbing or rubbing, depending on whatever I want the final result to be. And once that was done, I let it dry overnight and, and started working on the visor again. I used a heat gun to kind of shape it roughly into the shape that I needed and then retraced the outline of the eye hole. Off camera, I cut the strip of acrylic sheet to vaguely the right size. It's a little bigger than, it, than the actual eye holes because you need it to kind of sit inside the helmet and not go anywhere once it's in place. So again, I just used this HVAC tape. It's really sticky, pretty tough. You give it some relief cuts so that it doesn't tear and it kind of can just fold over any shape or angle that you need. So I just went through, taped every spot. I was originally going to glue this, but decided it was much less of a hassle to just tape it. Like I said, I had cracked the acrylic sheet when I cut it a little too quickly. And so I knew that if one of these days I wanted to go back and replace it, I could very easily. The last thing I did was put a little tiny strip of foam weather adhesive so that the edge of the acrylic sheet would not be cutting into anybody's nose. And then that was that. far thank you very much for watching this was a really fun project i've been building and tinkering with things my whole life but i'm a total beginner to this kind of prop building so if i can do it you can do it i hope that this inspires you i hope this was a fun watch for you and i hope you come back for more i look forward to seeing you again next week have a good day